Hello and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. India recently concluded its mammoth elections, marking the world's largest democratic exercise. With over 900 million eligible voters, the process spanned several phases and weeks. The results saw the ruling BJP-led National Democratic Alliance secure a decisive mandate, reinforcing its position and leadership in the world's most populous democracy. Well, here's the report. Take a look. मैं नरेंद्र दामोदर दास मोदी Prime Minister Narendra Modi took the oath for his third consecutive term, marking a significant moment in India's political history. The swearing-in ceremony at the President's house was attended by dignitaries from various countries, senior political leaders, and prominent personalities. Modi's continued leadership reflects the strong mandate given by the Indian electorate, the National Democratic Alliance. Under his leadership, the government is expected to focus on economic development, infrastructure projects, and social welfare programs. Modi's third term is anticipated to further strengthen India's position on the global stage and address key domestic challenges with renewed vigor and commitment. और मुझे पक्का विश्वास है ये पांच वर्ष वैश्विक परिवेश में भी भारत के लिए बहुत उपयोगी होने वाले हैं दुनिया अनेक संकटों से गुजर रही है अनेक तनावों से गुजर रही है अनेक आपदाओं से गुजर रही है ऐसी विकट परिस्थिति दुनिया ने बहुत लंबे अरसे के बाद देखी है हर देश इन सारी समस्याओं के बीच अपने आप को बचाए रखना बढ़ाते रहना चुनौतियों का डगर डगर पे सामना कर रहा है हम भारत वाले लोग हम भारतवासी खुद नसीब हैं कि इतने बड़े संकटों के बावजूद भी हम आज विश्व की सबसे तेज गति से बढ़ने वाली इकोनॉमी के रूप में जाने गए हैं Following Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP-led National Democratic Alliance NDA victory in the Lok Sabha elections, leaders worldwide extended congratulations, recognizing both Modi's electoral success and India's robust democracy. These felicitations highlighted the importance of strong bilateral relations and global cooperation. The widespread acknowledgement of Modi's victory underscored India's significance on the world stage and the international community's keen interest in its future under his leadership. India is, of course, the world's largest democracy, and the election that just played out over the last six weeks was the uh, largest exercise of democracy in the history of the world, and we commend the government of India, voters, and poll workers for this massive undertaking. India's general elections, held in seven phases, were a monumental event in the world's largest democracy. Voting to elect all 543 members of the Lok Sabha, the results were declared on June 4th, forming the 18th Lok Sabha. Out of 1.4 billion people, 968 million were eligible to vote, with a record turnout of 642 million, including an unprecedented 312 million women voters, the highest in history. The elections demonstrated India's organizational prowess, with over 68,000 monitoring teams and 1.5 million personnel, ensuring a smooth process. This remarkable participation highlights the inclusivity and vibrancy of India's democratic process. We have created a world record of 642 million proud Indian voters. This is a historic moment for all of us, for the nation as a whole. 
642 ever anywhere in the world in any of the electoral exercise. That's what is the number of voters. And this is just to give you some small statistics. This is 1.5 times of the voters of all G7 countries, US, UK, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Canada, all put together. We are comparing voters, not electors. And it is 2.5 times of the voters of 27 countries in the EU. That has been the incredible power of the voters of India. The 2024 Lok Sabha elections reaffirmed India's status as the world's largest democracy, symbolizing its commitment to transparency, inclusivity, and effective governance. By upholding democratic values and ensuring a smooth electoral process, India showcased to the world its enduring dedication to democratic ideals and its capability to manage complex tasks efficiently. Surat, in the western Indian state of Gujarat, is the global diamond hub. It is known for cutting and polishing about 90% of the world's diamonds with its skilled craftsmanship and advanced technology. Green Labs in Surat has recently gained attention for producing lab grown diamonds, also known as green diamonds. Now, these diamonds, identical in properties to mined ones, are available at one tenth the cost. And this innovation is driving growth in the Indian diamond industry. A symbol of eternal love, diamonds are some of the most expensive jewelry in the world. If you're lucky to own this precious gemstone, chances are it came through Surat, the western port city in India, which serves as a mega workshop where 90% of the world's diamonds are cut and polished. Surat plays a significant role in the industry as a major contributor to India's gem and jewelry exports, contributing to approximately 40 billion US dollars in exports. Giving a further push to the industry, the city is now home to the world's largest trading center of diamonds, the Surat Diamond Burst. Spread across 35.54 acres with 6.7 million square feet of built-up area, the center encompasses 4,500 offices for national and international traders. Dinesh Navadia, the regional chairman of the Gem and Jewelry Export Promotion Council and president of the Surat Diamond Association, believes it to be a great milestone for the country and sees it as playing a vital role in job generation and further bolstering the Indian economy. जो सूरत डायमंड बूस यहाँ सूरत के अंदर बिल्डिंग बना है, वो ऐसे देखे तो दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा ट्रेडिंग सेंटर है, और आज तक एक कमी थी इंडिया के भारत के अंदर कि अपने यहाँ अच्छा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नहीं है, लेकिन हम आज दावा के साथ कह सकते हैं कि दुबई और अमेरिका से भी अच्छा कंट्रक्शन और और जो फ्यूचर है डायमंड इंडस्ट्री का आज हम देखें तो 1960 से कंटिन्यूटी कट एंड पॉलिश का कारोबार यहाँ हो रहा है और इसमें ग्रोथ ही देख रहे हैं हम और ग्रोथ जो पहले कम था आज हम 42 बिलियन तक हमेरा एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ गया था लेकिन इंटरनेशनल मार्केट के कारण कभी माइनस और डाउन होता है और फिर से All heads turned to India when its Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, presented a 7.5 carat green diamond to the US First Lady, Jill Biden, during a state visit last year. What was so special about this diamond? And why was it called green? To answer this, let's visit Green Labs in Surat, a facility that produces diamonds at a cost of about tenth of the rough diamonds imported to India from the big mines of Russia, Canada, and in many African nations. In a stride towards sustainability and reducing India's carbon footprint, Green Labs is revolutionizing the industry with its diamonds. These are all produced, cut, and polished under one roof. The diamonds produced in the Green Lab facility showcase the chemical and optical properties same as earth mine diamonds, 
and emit a meager amount of 0.02 grams of carbon per carat. The prestigious International Gemological Institute has certified these diamonds on four C's. Cut, color, carat, and clarity. Sanket Patel, director at Green Labs, claims their facility to be the largest exporter of lab-grown diamonds in India, with a production of over 2 lakh carats a month. Green Lab, we, uh, we have one of the largest facilities in the world, as we are the largest exporter of lab-grown diamonds, which is CVD lab-grown diamonds, uh, throughout India. And uh, we hold a capacity of more than 250,000 carats of rough every month, and more than 100,000 carat of polish. Uh, that we uh, export and supply to the Indian market. Lab-grown diamonds are gaining popularity globally due to their affordability and ethical appeal. The global market shares of lab-grown gems surged from 3.5% in 2018 to 18.5% in 2023. Industry analysts predict that this share will likely exceed 20% in the year 2024 to 2025. Recognizing the immense potential in the sector, the Indian diamond industry is anticipating a much larger growth in coming years. Today, there is a new opportunity created because we import natural diamonds in the natural raw material in 100% raw material and cut and polish it and plus it and export it. But this is the CVD diamond. Today, we will rub and production, cut and polish it and make it jewelry. So, the concept of making India is the concept of Pradhan Mantri Ji. वो 100% इसमें सेट होता है और फीड भी होता है। Given the rising demand and penetration of lab-grown diamonds in the Indian and international markets, Green Labs sense an acceptance of their product prevailing among its business partners and clients. People have been uh, comfortable buying lab-grown diamonds now. Uh, when we see mined diamonds, the 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 ratio of purchasing of mined diamonds was probably uh, 3 to 4 percent, roughly about exactly, I couldn't say, but 3 to 4 percent worldwide. And what we predict with lab grown diamond is penetrating more than 10 to 15 percent of the world's population. So, obviously, uh, this diamond is going to be for a long time, and it's the same thing, and people are going to be uh, wearing it much more often. The bustling diamond industry of Surat is ushering into a new sector of lab-grown diamonds. Merchants dealing in mined diamonds do not see the lab-grown diamond industry as a market disruptor, but rather as a parallel industry that complements the traditional diamond cutting and polishing businesses in Surat. Be it lab-grown diamonds or mined diamonds, the skilled artisans of Surat ensure immaculate work and will continue to maintain its luster, for now and forever. Let's move on to the Kalburgi district of Karnataka, which recently celebrated the 620th Urs festival of the Sufi saint Hazrat Khwaja Bandhanawaz Ke Sudaraz. Now, this three day festival attracted devotees from across the state and beyond who gathered to partake in the devotional festivities. The state of Karnataka in the southern part of India has long been a melting pot of cultures for centuries and the region has always promoted love and brotherhood within society. In this spirit, the state recently celebrated the 620th Urs festival of the most revered saint, Hazrat Khaja Banda Nawaz Gesudaras. The occasion was a testament to the prevailing harmony and unity in an inclusive society. People from all religions came together without discrimination on the occasion to bow their heads to the 14th century Sufi saint. कि जिसके अंदर हम देखते हैं कि मुल्क के अतराफ वक्नाफ हर जगह से लोग यहाँ पर हाजिर होते हैं और न सिर्फ मुसलमान बल्कर हर मज़हब के हर ख़ोम के लोग यहाँ पर हाजिर होते हैं और अपनी वाबस्तगी अपनी आखिदत को यहाँ पर जाहिर करते हैं और एक मिसाल देते हैं कि कैसे हिंदू मुस्लिम यहाँ एक जा मिलकर सब के एक साथ होकर इसको 
On the occasion of the auspicious Urs festival, the state organized an annual fair which was attended by devotees from across and beyond the state. Moreover, the three-day long festival followed an array of recreational programs including ceremonial verses, speeches and kawali programs. It is believed that saints solve all the problems and fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty-handed from here. तो यहां पर किसी धर्म किसी जात की कोई वैल्यू नहीं है यह बंदा नवाज सबको नवाजते हैं इस दरबार में हर धर्म हर जाति का शख्स सच्ची श्रद्धा से अकीदत से आता है और अपनी झोलियां भर के जाता है अपनी मुरादें भर के जाता है अडॉन्ड विद फ्लावर्स एंड एम्बेलिशमेंट्स द सैंडल प्रोसेशन ऑफ द सूफी सेंट वाज अटेंडेड बाय थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इंटरफेथ डिविटीज For ages, Sufi saints like Hazrat Khaja Banda Nawaz Gesudaras have propagated the message of spiritualism and harmony in our country, and their teachings are still playing a significant role in strengthening the thread of secularism. Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. On the floor of the X-Robots factory in China's northeastern coastal city of Dalian, engineers develop humanoid robots with a focus on enhancing facial expressions and emotions. Neck-length silicon mask lies sprawled on table alongside silicon arms and feet, while disembodied heads sit on display and humanoid robots in various stages of construction stand nearby. Drawings of robot designs adorn a wall as an ex-robots worker moves her head, smiles, and sticks out her tongue. A humanoid robot mimics her movement thanks to tiny motors installed in several spaces in its head. Ex-robots. said it takes from 2 weeks to a month to produce a humanoid robot with prices ranging from 1.5 million yuan to 2 million yuan the main purpose of the company's robot so far is for display in museums one of which extrobots has housed in the same building as its factory in the mountains of uttarakhand A unique startup called Himalayan Heart is breaking ground. Founded by a local woman, this venture specializes in organic food processing with operations entirely managed by rural women. Discover how it's not only providing pure and clean products but also fostering self-reliance among rural women. Meet Divya Chaufen from Pore Garhwal in Uttarakhand. who's empowered rural women through her venture Himalayan Hot. Leaving her job, Divya and her mother started the social enterprise in 2014. They cultivate various fruits, vegetables, herbs and dry fruits on their land. These undergo processing to make juice concentrates, sauces, jams and herbal teas distributed nationwide. What makes this venture unique is that all processing tasks are carried out exclusively by rural women, from harvesting fruits in the fields to cutting, chopping, kitchen work, and packaging the finished products. Women are involved in every step of the process. Based so Himalayan Heart, uh, we've been doing it now, 2014. I mean, 10 years, and our whole intention has been to have reach out to as many women. So we have about 13, 14 core women, and then when the season is more for some fruit or something, then we have additional women who join us, eight or seven, sometimes ten. So basically, all products at Himalayan Hot are handmade and free from additives, colors, chemicals, and preservatives. In the processing unit's kitchen, where all goods are prepared. Stringent cleanliness is maintained and items are packaged in glass bottles. 
These products, ranging from 2 USD to 6 USD, are directly distributed to customers and retailers across India. With an annual turnover of 42,000 to 45,000 USD, Divya is considering exporting natural products into the international market. Uh, what we do is we make preserves and we do not use any you know, artici uh, artificial ingredients, preservatives, colors, nothing. We use organic khand, which is uh, raw sugar, and uh, we are bottling, we are making preserves, chutneys, uh, we make pasta sauce, we make uh, herbal uh, teas, different herbal blends uh, from the produce, we do seasoning salts, we make vinegars. So basically the idea is how can we, um, you know, preserve the produce in a way that has good shelf life and we can, uh, you know, we can bottle it and ship it. So, right now we are shipping Pan India basically, all from our farm in uh, Pori. Around 14 to 15 local women work here, each committing 4 to 5 hours daily. They work harmoniously as a team and earn a decent monthly income, supporting their families. In remote hilly regions, job opportunities are scarce making Himalayan hut a vital source of employment for these rural women. My work here is Malta, Jam, this is all cutting and cutting. And I have a lot of benefit here. I can do good for my children here. My work is good for my children. 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 तो उन्होंने बहुत लेडीज़ों का रोजगार खोल रखा है यहाँ पर ये बहुत अच्छा कर रखा है उन लोगों ने माले बस हमें यही खुशी है बस कि हमारे बीच में रोजगार नहीं था और हमारे में हमने हमारे लेडीज़ों के बारे में इतना अच्छा सोचा है कि पंद्रह बीस लेडीज़ों को काम दे रखा है बस हमें इतनी खुशी है Working at Himalayan Hut has changed Deepa's life. Previously burdened by unemployment and family issues, she can now afford her children's education and manage household expenses as well. I work in Himalayan Hut. I work there for six years. 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 Divya Chalfin and her venture exemplify how courage, perseverance, and organization can help us achieve our dreams while also uplifting others. Through Himalayan Hut, Divya has not only become self-reliant, but has also brought about a significant change in the lives of many mountain women who face numerous challenges. As the Indian fashion industry grows up, it is ready to shine worldwide, showcasing its rich heritage and modern style. Top designers are getting famous globally by blending old techniques with new ideas. See how Indian fashion is mixing tradition with today's trends, putting our designers in the global spotlight. India shines in the global fashion scene with vibrant colors, intricate embroideries, and a rich textile heritage. The thriving Indian fashion industry captivates audiences worldwide with its mesmerizing collections built on heritage, but ever-evolving, and consequently leaving a mark on the global stage. Notable Indian designers like Rahul Mishra blend traditional techniques with modern aesthetics, gaining international acclaim and gracing the runways of fashion capitals. Mishra's innovative designs are celebrated in global fashion magazines and worn by international celebrities at prominent events worldwide, including the Met Gala and Cannes Film Festival. As a brand, it has been almost like 10 years for us to showcase. And we have done uh, Paris Fashion Week, ready to wear collection since 20, uh, you know, 14. And then since after our Woolmark Prize win. And then we have done, we are doing now this 10th season for us to do Haute Couture Week, which started from 2020, January. 
So I would really say like if I was not from India, nothing would have been possible. I think every part of the brand or everything what we do today is because of the beautiful craftsmanship or thousands of skilled people who work towards it. Although, you know, uh, the brand is not just my personal brand, I always say this. It's almost like a community brand, which is created by a community of artisans, people who work on it. With increasing demand globally, many Indian designers are set to shine on the world's runways. Ahmed Agarwal is celebrated for his innovative designs, blending traditional craftsmanship with modern techniques. His collections debut at prestigious events like India Couture Week and Lakme Fashion Week, featuring elaborate gowns, lengas, and saris. The meticulous work invested in each garment is no surprise to those familiar with the Indian fashion industry. I think for me the most important aspect of uh, showing something internationally is that it's still rooted in India. The crafts, the, the skill set that we have uh, and um, you know the materials that we use and the fabrics that we create. But I also feel what's very important for me is that for me India is not just about traditional craftsmanship. India is as much a forerunner in um, thinking out of the box, creating something relevant and new in uh, modern times. And I think my work is a representation of what India truly represents, uh, the culture that it, it has and it has been today. The haute couture sector, known for its exclusive high-end garments, has seen notable growth. Valued at 1.4726 billion USD in 2021, the industry is projected to reach 1.34566 billion USD by 2028, with a compound annual growth rate of 2.3%. Indian designers are gaining recognition in haute couture, benefiting from India's robust textile and apparel industry. The Fashion Design Council of India FDCI, nurtures talent, offers platforms for showcasing work, and promotes India's rich fashion heritage globally. India is the flavor all over the world uh, in so many different things, but where it comes to fashion, this is a very, uh, very recent change that we are seeing. And I for one, I'm really proud that this change is taking place. For example, you know, our people are now regularly taking part in not only in uh, different fashion weeks around the world, they are also taking part in various trade shows, be it in Paris, be it in London, be it in Milan, or even in New York or Los Angeles for that matter. So I am happy that a very wide spectrum of people are going all over from India and we are suddenly becoming, we become more uh, prominent as a nation of designers who are participating. <laughs> Indian designers are making waves globally, infusing their culture into international platforms. From New York to Paris, London to Milan, the fusion of tradition and modernity in Indian fashion captivates audiences and critics alike. With India's robust economic foundation and growing middle class, the fashion industry is poised to become more organized and profitable in coming years. Indian fashion seamlessly blends tradition and innovation, captivating global audiences and redefining contemporary style. That's all we have on today's show, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.